I hope everybody is doing well and staying healthy and looking out for your loved ones and the people who care and depend upon you. And glad we could get a few minutes to spend here today um, just chatting and answering some of your questions, as I promised I would um, in our discussion yesterday. So first and foremost, one of the things I love most about my job is the ability to get out and interact with Pennsylvanians and talk with them and, and visit lots of different places from Philly to Erie and every place in between. Obviously, that's not possible right now um, as we are confined to our homes and doing our part to stop the spread of COVID-19. But I didn't want to let an opportunity go by where we actually couldn't interact, where we didn't have the opportunity for me to answer your questions and engage. So it may not be in person, it may not be at your community center, but at least we could do it here today. So I wanted to answer some of your questions. And I've got a, a helper here who's gonna uh, ask the questions that you've submitted online since we announced this yesterday. We're gonna try and get to all the questions that came in. For those of you whose questions we don't get to today, I'm gonna to come back and do it next Friday. We're gonna try and do this at least once a week. Before we do that though, um, I do wanna note that I'm wearing a Sixers hoodie today, in part because I am a loyal Sixers fan, even though they've been frustrating me a little bit this year, um, but also because one of the things I started just a couple weeks ago was to focus with all this bad news out there, focus on some of the good news, and we started a hashtag here are the helpers. Well, the Sixers have stepped up and have made themselves real helpers in the community. I saw that they donated 10,000 Chromebooks, you know, laptops for students in the Philadelphia School District who didn't have them. So shout out to the Sixers. We appreciate you very much. Um, Soap's wearing a Pitt t-shirt, not just because she's going to Pitt, but also because from the folks who gave you the polio vaccine and Jonas Salk, they are working right now on developing um, a, a vaccine or a patch that's gonna help hopefully be a cure to COVID-19 a few months from now though. So shout out to Pitt, shout out to the Sixers, here are the helpers, there are many of them. And with that, Soph, why don't we get to your questions because I wanna hear what's on people's awesome. minds. So the first question, I'm applying for unemployment uh, for the first time. What should I be looking for when trying to figure out if a site is trying to scam me or not? So here, here's the deal. Um, sadly, we are approaching more than 800,000 Pennsylvanians who have applied for unemployment. Um, and sadly, I think that number is gonna keep growing. We're not only dealing with a pandemic and a public health crisis, but we're dealing with a fiscal crisis. We're dealing with challenges in every single family and job losses mounting across Pennsylvania. Go on the Pennsylvania website and that's where you apply for unemployment and begin that process. If you have questions about it, you can go on my website, attorneygeneral.gov. Here's what you should not do. Do not click on unsolicited links from people telling you that they can help you get unemployment. Don't answer those calls that you weren't expecting where people are suggesting they can somehow help. Those are scams. Those are people trying to take advantage of you. So stick with our state website, pa.gov. You can apply there. And if you need any other assistance, feel free to contact my office. Our Fair Labor Division is working incredibly hard to make sure you've got help during this time. And there is help available between the Federal Care Act that Senator Casey and others have worked so hard to, to put in place um, and other resources are available. Just please don't fall for a scam right now. Okay. Thanks. So the second question, yeah. having kids home from school mm -hmm. and trying to work under the state's stay at home order is hard as we know in the Shapiro household. Mm -hmm. So any advice for a single mom who has two kids? Well, uh, I will say it is both a challenge and a blessing, right? I'm home with um, our four kids. In fact, um, my nine-year-old dropped this word search on my desk uh, just a couple hours ago. I am close. I've got four words of it looks like the eight or nine. Um, I don't know if he did this on purpose, but I also found the word poop on here too. It's right in the middle. I didn't circle it though. Um, and I post it on Instagram if you wanna give your kids an activity to do. I know it's not easy, but here's the kinds of things we're trying to do. Settle into a routine as best as you can. Wake up at a set time, you know, get dressed, shower, all that kind of stuff at a set time. Try and eat your meals at set times. Um, we've been blessed to be able to have dinner together every night. Um, anything you can do to create a routine, to create activities. Get outside if it's safe and you're able to do that. Um, we're big hoops players, so play as much basketball as you can. Do art projects, just do as much as you can to kind of break up the day. 
Um, my wife does this way better than I, but try and stay engaged in their online learning. I've been incredibly impressed with the teachers and their ability to teach in these challenging times. So try and have a routine, try and have some regular time together as a family and do your best to, to manage through. Talk openly with your kids about what's going on, depending upon their ages, you know, there may be some details you don't wanna get into, but just try and be open and honest about what's happening and help them understand how, the, how they can be empowered, right? If they wash their hands, if they avoid their friends right now, if they're careful about you know, coughing into their elbow, they can actually control the spread of this virus. And so that's a really empowering thing for kids. Great, so on the same topic of kids, uh, will you let your daughter give you a haircut? <laughs> it is getting really uh, bushy here. Um, our 15 year old son, it's his birthday today, he turned 15 today, um, purchased a Clippers uh, and we have them here in our house. I don't know that um, I am going to do that, but if I get desperate, I will tell you of our four kids and my wife and I, the only person I would trust to actually do that is you, so. It's good to hear. If you see me looking different next Friday um, with a buzz cut, it was because I heard. <laughs> awesome. So the next question. I don't have health insurance and I'm scared to go to the ER. Is there any way that the Office of Attorney General can help out? Well, a lot of people who have lost health insurance because they've lost their jobs can qualify for Obamacare and can qualify for Medicaid. And so we have a healthcare section working around the clock to work on these things. Um, your state reps and state senators have help and resources as well. I would reach out right away. You can reach out to us, you can reach out to others and see if you qualify for Medicaid, see if you qualify for Obamacare. And if you do, we'll make sure that you get enrolled and that you have coverage. Now onto a price gouging question. Uh, a pharmacy in my neighborhood is selling hand sanitizer for $21. Mm. How can we help to stop them? Well, look, I mean, if it's a huge bottle of hand sanitizer, maybe that price is okay, but probably based upon the tip we got, it's a small amount of hand sanitizer. Here's the deal, we've been all over this price gouging. We've received over 3,500 tips from Pennsylvanians um, who feel as though they're being price gouged. In fairness, in some cases, it's not price gouging. In other cases, it really is. Some folks have asked me like, what do we do when those tips come in? Well, first off, if you're gonna submit a tip, submit it to pricegouging at attorneygeneral.gov. And when you submit it, I need four pieces of information so my team and I can work for you. Number one, the name of the product. Number two, the price of the product. Number three, the location of the store, whether it's online or in your community. Number four, the name of the store. If you give us those four things, then we can do something for you. Um, what we typically do when those complaints come in is do a quick bit of research to determine if it meets the price gouging threshold. We then call the merchant and just tell them to cut it out. And most of them do. For those that don't, we send out cease and desist letters. We've sent out more than 200 of them across the Commonwealth. And for businesses that at that point refuse to comply, we can fine them up to $10,000 per violation. Here's something important for business owners out there to understand. This price gouging statute applies not just for you and I when we go to the store and buy it in a retail setting, but retail establishments buying it from wholesalers and distributors, if they're being price gouged by their wholesaler or distributor, we can help there as well. So make sure you let us know on any of those fronts. And for those of you who really wanna know what the legal definition is of price gouging, although I hope you do not waste your time trying to do the math in this, it is if you're charging an unconscionably excessive price, which is defined as 20% higher than what the cost was in the week before the governor issued his disaster declaration. Here's the bottom line, you'll know it when you see it. And when you see it, let us know and we'll fight for you. Thank you. So the next question, I saw that your office is stopping all evictions. Does this mean we don't need to pay rent for April? Mm. Dor During this disaster declaration, um, you cannot be evicted by your landlord, period, end of sentence. And if your landlord's trying to evict you, let my office know right away and we'll go fight for you. We've done this for other Pennsylvanians, we'll do it for you. Uh, here's the other thing. If um, you think that this is a license to not pay your rent, even though you still have the ability to pay it, um, you're gonna be sorely mistaken because here's the deal. You have a contractual obligation with your landlord. If you owe you know, a thousand bucks 
on the first of every month. If you can't pay it now, try and work with your landlord. And if you really can't pay it and your landlord won't work with you, they can't evict you. But at some point, that $1,000 is going to come due. Now, I've asked the landlords across Pennsylvania to join me in delaying any kind of eviction until later this summer. And the Pennsylvania Apartment Association did agree to postpone any evictions until after July. I think it was July 15th to be exact. But you still have a responsibility if you could pay your rent to pay it. And so I want folks to understand that at home. So... Is there any way to stop hoarding at grocery stores? Uh, this person who submitted the question says that their grocery store has been out of paper towels every single time they've tried. Yeah, there has been an issue in the supply chain on toilet paper and paper towels and some soaps. Um, look, folks, you know, hoarding is not going to help you. And at the end of the day, it's going to hurt Pennsylvanians. Buy what you need for sure. Make sure you can take care of yourself and your loved ones. I have no problem with that. And the governor doesn't either. But as the governor spoke about the other day, you know, hoarding doesn't solve the problem. It, you know, we have to understand we are all in this together. We all have a responsibility to do our part. Um, a big part of that is maintaining physical distance from others and maintaining good hygiene, washing your hands, things like that. Um, but also just caring for your neighbors. You can still go buy enough milk and eggs and bread and all the stuff that you need to operate your home and to take care of your family without denying someone else the ability to buy it. I have seen some stores say, you know, we're going to limit one package per customer, two package per customer, things like that. I think that's reasonable. And, you know, what, what I'm hearing when I talk to merchants, um, both at the wholesale level and the retail level, is that they're doing everything they can to keep that supply chain running so the rest of us have what we need. So do your part in that process. And by the way, just before we get to the next question, shout out to those amazing grocery workers. Those who are working in the store, those who are delivering groceries, they are amazing. They're on the front lines. I bet they never thought they'd be on the front lines in a crisis like they are now but they are on the front lines, they're doing their part, and they are really inspiring people. And, um, you know, tip them well, and make sure that we're taking care of them. For sure, for sure. And uh, we have a few questions left. So yeah. the next one, uh, I saw your announcement on banks and grace periods on auto loans. Yeah. Do all of Pennsylvania banks have to participate? Mm. So late last week, um, I started to think about what could we do, and my team and I started to think about what could we do to protect people who had just lost their job, right? Who couldn't, literally couldn't make a mortgage payment or a car payment because you know, it's one thing they got to deal with the, the company, but a lot of them also have to deal with their bank, right? And if their bank comes trying to collect that money, they're making a horrible choice of having to choose between paying their mortgage, paying their car payment, or paying for the groceries they need for them and, and their loved ones right now. And so I reached out to Pennsylvania's largest bank, PNC, and, and other bank CEOs as well. And I said, look, join me in this effort. Join me in protecting Pennsylvania consumers. And we launched something called the Pennsylvania Care Package or the PA Care Package where I'm calling on banks to agree to a few things. Number one, do away with those annoying fees, right? The late fees and the, the, the administrative fees, all those fees that just add up and annoy me and, and other people. Um, give us 90 days to pay our mortgage, 90 days to pay auto loans and consumer loans. Don't report non-payment to the credit reporting agencies and work with their customers, not make it harder for them. Here's the good news, banks are really stepping up. PNC was the first to sign on to the Pennsylvania Care Package. And then we've had others, First Commonwealth and Dollar and Fulton and Citizens and others are signing up and, and making sure that not just their customers know, but the public knows that the banking industry is willing to work with us in this process and be a part of the solution. I keep saying this over and over again. I know I sound like a broken record, but we all have a responsibility to do our part right now. And I'm pleased that banks have joined us in this Pennsylvania Care Package. So, so no, you are not required to do it, but a lot of banks are. And we're gonna have more banks to announce over the weekend and on Monday um, that, that are signing up. And if your bank hasn't signed up yet, you can get a full list on my website, attorneygeneral.gov. If your bank hasn't signed up yet, then call on them to do it. It's the least they can do right now. And they're doing a lot for people when they step up and sign on to the Pennsylvania Care Package. So we've talked a lot about uh, ways to prevent being scammed, mm -hmm. but uh, this Pennsylvanian thinks that they were scammed um, 
by someone calling from their bank to reverse an overdraft fee. So they're asking for help. What can the Office of Attorney General do to help that person? Right. Shoot us that information right away at scams at attorneygeneral.gov or you can go to attorneygeneral.gov, click on the link at the top of the page and submit a complaint. Um, try not to click on unsolicited links or take unsolicited calls. Never, ever, ever give over your bank information or credit card information or social security number or personal information. Please don't do that. That doesn't help you. It only helps the scammers. Great. And our last question, mm. who would you like to highlight today for hashtag here are the helpers? Well, again, look, I got to I got to give a shout out to the Sixers, um, making sure students who don't have an Internet connection the way we have here and don't have computers for distance learning. Ten thousand of them are about to get computers thanks to the Sixers. And I really appreciate uh, them stepping up. I want to also thank Sherwin Williams, uh, the paint company. Sherwin Williams reached out to my office just a couple of days ago. They had thousands of those N95 masks, you know, those really critical, critically important masks. Uh, for first responders and healthcare workers and police and others. And they said, you know, we've got these thousands, we want to donate them. And I had heard from some doctors at Lankanaw Hospital on the main line who literally didn't have enough masks to protect them when they were doing their jobs to look after patients and, and others who would come. And so we were able to distribute um, about 3,700 of those masks from Sherwin-Williams to Lankanaw, an equal number to Einstein. Um, you know, they are just taxed in so many ways, particularly at their North Philadelphia facility at, at Einstein. And we want to see them be able to care for those in need and see them be successful. So we were able to get those masks over there and Sherwin-Williams also donated gloves. And so I'm really, really grateful to Sherwin-Williams. I'm glad we were able to help out our healthcare workers in Einstein and Lankanaw. And we're going to continue to highlight those who step up to help us. If you've got some ideas on how you can help let me know. Um, we had uh, we had someone from a local drapery company reach out to me yesterday because instead of making drapes right now, they're cutting the material and turning them into DIY masks. And we're going to get them out. I'll highlight them next week. But just examples of how big companies, you know, individuals are stepping up uh, to do their part. So thank you very much. And again, shout out to University of Pittsburgh, this this vaccine, this patch could be a game changer and um, we need to support our researchers. We need to believe in science, right? I mean, I am so, I'm gonna get on a soapbox here for a second, but I am so sick and tired of politicians who gleefully ignore science and pretend that the scientists and the experts don't matter, that some bogus ideology or some nonsense they saw on Twitter matters more. Listen to the scientists. It, they matter and we need to trust them. We need to trust them as we deal with the pandemic. We need to trust them when it comes to climate change and we need to make sure they are incorporated into our decision-making. Listen to the scientists, invest in the scientists. You know, I've called on the Trump administration over and over and over again to fund and listen to the scientists at the EPA, for example. We need to have that all throughout our government. Now is the time for expertise and smarts not ideology and nonsense and partisanship. Now's the time to come together and do that work. And they're doing that at Pitt. And I'm really proud of them. So folks, listen, um, so thanks for your help. I Thank appreciate you. it. This was fun. And I'm sure way more people watch because you were here and I wasn't <laughs> just blabbing on and on by myself. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next, uh, next week. Please stay safe this weekend. Um, stay healthy physically and mentally. And know that we in the Office of Attorney General are going to continue to work hard for you. Okay? See you next time. Thanks, guys.